When Congress passed Title IX nearly 50 years ago to give women and girls equal opportunities in education and sports, it did so with the understanding that men and women are, you know, different. Yet as our culture continues down the road of denying biological differences between men and women, even the basic expectation of fairness in sports is crumbling around us. My name is Madison Kenyon, and I run track and cross country at Idaho State University. Ever since I was very young, I've loved to compete. I've spent countless hours in the gym and on the track, fine-tuning my skills, giving it my best to turn in my top performance every time the starting gun is fired. Like so many other women who compete against me, running isn't just something I do. It's a platform for opportunity that helps define who I am. In so many ways, my success on the track and the opportunities that success has afforded me fulfills the primary goal behind Title IX. That legislation has opened the door for countless women to develop character and key leadership skills, earn college scholarships, and launch their own careers. It has provided a way for women to be successful and to make their mark on the world. In fact, surveys show that more than 90% of female executives played sports. Pushing through mental and physical barriers, running just one more lap when I feel like I can't take another step, is a great way to prepare for a lifetime of success no matter what I end up doing with my life. Having successes and failures teaches life lessons of dedication and perseverance. But in the fall of 2019, I encountered a challenge that no amount of training could overcome. I learned that a male athlete would be allowed to compete in the women's cross country and track events for my conference. With an open mind, I competed in my first race against this biological male. I got left in the dust, along with hundreds of other females. From there on, I competed four more times against this athlete. Each time, I found myself displaced, frustrated, and deflated. Separate teams in sports provides males and females each with opportunities for fair competition and victory. It ensures that if women like me work hard, that hard work pays off and we have a shot at winning. To protect a fair playing field for female athletes like me, Idaho passed the Fairness in Women's Sports Act in March of 2020. The law simply relies on what science tells us about the differences between men and women. It's there to keep female athletes from paying the price of ignoring biological reality. The ink had barely dried before the ACLU rushed to file a lawsuit, asking a judge to strike the law down. If the ACLU has its way, males who identify as females will be allowed to compete in women's sports in Idaho. This means that biological males who have physical advantages over similarly gifted and trained females will take the place of females, pushing us off our own podium. I know how frustrating it is to lose to a male athlete and to watch them displace a young woman because I have experienced it. No other woman or girl should have to go through that. Female athletes deserve a voice. That's why my teammate, Mary-Kate Marshall, and I, with the help of Alliance Defending Freedom, intervened to defend Idaho's law and the women and girls it protects. Female athletes should have the same opportunity as male athletes to enjoy fair competition and experience the thrill of victory. But allowing males to compete in women's sports ignores biological reality. And by doing so, it disadvantages women and destroys our athletic opportunities, ruining the integrity of women's sports. That's unfair, and it's antithetical to Title IX's goal, which is to guarantee equal opportunities for women and girls in education, including on the playing field. This isn't happening just in Idaho. In Connecticut, a policy by the state's athletic association has cost female track athletes 15 women's state championship titles and over 85 chances to advance to higher levels of competition. Again, this is bigger than denied opportunities to compete on a fair playing field. Women and girls are being denied chances to make teams, earn scholarships, gain an education, and pave a path to a future job. If the Biden administration does what it's promising to do, this discriminatory policy could be imposed nationwide. This isn't equality and it isn't progress. But thankfully, it's not the end of the story either. Find out more about our case and what you can do at www.adflegal.org slash stand for freedom.